Hey Internet, welcome to Worldview Everlasting, your favorite YouTube addiction. We got a question from a viewer here about, well, as they often are, right, about sin and about grace and about how we can know that we are saved. The question is this, as a Lutheran, I know that I am at the same time righteous and a sinner. You know, we would say that simul justus et peccator simultaneously, holy or righteous and a, a sinful, broken, uh, turned inward on ourselves. He says, however, I find very scant if any evidence in the New Testament where the Christian is specifically referred to as a sinner. Um, hmm, that's an interesting statement. I don't know that I can agree with that in any way, shape, or form, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, recently, a Christian told me our identity is that of saints, but not as sinners. Uh, how would you respond? I would say they got half the story. I would say that you're reading half of the New Testament. I would say you're ignoring an awful lot of the New Testament. Uh, Romans chapter 7 comes to mind where Paul says, you know, the sin that's within me who will rescue me from this body of death. I don't do the things I want to do. And most people who want to hold to this idea that we're not sinners anymore, they're going to say, oh, well, that's not really Paul talking about himself, right? He's talking about himself before he became a Christian. Well, it doesn't say that in the text. You're just making stuff up at that point. The, 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 it is manifold the number of times that you have people uh, real people who are Christians talking about their sin. Peter, when he first sees Jesus, says, uh, away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. He knows it right away. And the reason he knows it is because he's a believer. He knows who the Lord is, right? It's not like he's an unbeliever at that time. Uh, later as well, he proves himself a sinner as he and Paul have a confrontation over whether or not Gentiles have to follow the Old Testament ritual codes. But where I want to go right now is into a bit of 1 John, where uh, people who like to point to the sinlessness of the Christian, which we are sinless by faith, alone through the grace of Christ's imputed righteousness. You have no sin. You must count yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. Your sinlessness is at the same time existing with your entirely wretched sinful state that you live in. It is by your flesh alone you are entirely sinful. By faith in God's word alone, by its power, you are sinless. And there is nowhere that this is more evidently seen going back and forth. So if you just take half of the story, you're only going to get half of the story than in the epistle that John writes uh, first, uh, first John. So he says this, he says, this is the message we have heard from the beginning and uh, we, are, we have heard from him and we proclaim to you that God is light in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and don't practice the truth, right? So the truth is to have common union with God and not walk in darkness. But what does it mean to not walk in darkness? Does it mean to be perfect or does it mean to know the truth, right, about what is? If we walk in the light as he is in the light, that is, everything is made bare and plain by his word, we have common unity, fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And notice it's not the plural sins there, it's sin as in the original, right? So if we are under the truth, we are cleansed from sin. This is true, even though it's still with us. Because if we say we have no sin, and John's speaking in the present here, right? He's not saying if we say we didn't used to have sins, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Right? Uh, to, to, you would have to say somehow that the Christian uh, has the truth of knowing they're sinful and then is, is converted to Christianity and is covered by the blood of Jesus and is no longer sinful so that they can say they have no sin after this. But then who's he writing to? He's writing to Christians. <laughs> He's not writing to unbelievers. He's writing to Christians. If you say you have no sin, if you say you're a Christian and you're not uh, carrying sin in your flesh, you are not telling the truth. You're a liar. Yeah? Uh, the truth is not in you. If we confess our sins as the basis for confession and absolution, and I mean, you got the office of the ministry from other passages of scripture, but the basis for practicing it regularly here is to be honest about it, to come confess our sins, then we know he is faithful and just, righteous, to forgive us, absolve us, divorce us from our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we say we have not sinned, verse 10, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So that's not exactly what I would say to your friend who said this, that our identity is as saints but not as sinners. Uh, yeah, you're making God a liar and his word is not in you. I, I don't think I'd quite say it like that, but it is where I'd go. I'd want to sit down and want to look at these verses together and say, look, we gotta, we got to have all these verses. You can't just pick the ones later that say the one who continues in sin is not a Christian. Because it, it does say that. If you, if, you, if you love your sin, you got problems. Yeah. Uh, if, if you only love your sin, if you uh, cling to that sin uh, and, and chase after it without guilt, without shame, without a conscience, without a need to have it taken away, without imploring God that he would forgive you of it, yeah, if you're seared your conscience, this is a problem. He talks about that later too, but you got to keep all the verses. You can't just keep the ones you like, 
right? Which is why Lutherans come down with this, hey, Christians are saints and sinners because the verses say that. And even though it mathematically doesn't add up, right? This isn't a scientific formula that you can test in a lab. It's what the scriptures most certainly say. And it's actually the heart of the good news that even though I remain in my flesh, I am also by promise common unioned, communioned, fellowshiped with the eternal God in his son, Jesus Christ. And by his righteousness, my sin is brought to nothing. So that now I can both admit that I'm a sinner, confess my sins in church, and strive to do good, not to prove that I'm good, but for you. Because my neighbor, you need it, and I need it from you too. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for tuning in. Hope that helps a little bit. My little children, I write these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Christians are sinners and nothing but, except for that they're Christians, which means they're also bound to Christ who holds no sin in him and swallows it all, specifically, in his death on the cross. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next week. Rock on.